Uh, now I'm very pleased to uh, present my dear friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Ahmed Kamil from the National Heart Institute, and I'm sure it will be prestigious to talk about the Bry hypertension trial. Good morning, dear professors. Uh, before I start, I would like to thank my dear professor, Dr. Mohamed Abdel Ghani, for his kind invitation. Uh, this is my presentation. It's about uh, resistant hypertension, uh, the BRIGHT hypertension trial. Uh, it's a phase two uh, trial uh, uh, testing uh, a new drug. It's uh, an, an inhibitor for uh, aldosterone synthase uh, enzyme. Uh, it's called uh, Baxdrostat. Uh, this trial was uh, published uh, last year in 2022 uh, comparing uh, Baxodrostat uh, to placebo. So this is the background of the trial. Uh, aldosterone synthase controls the synthesis of aldosterone. Aldosterone inhibition has been a pharmacological uh, target for treatment of resistant hypertension long time ago. So uh, the aldosterone synthase inhibitors uh, target uh, a likely cause of hypertension uh, 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 a likely cause of, of uh, as you can see, is uh, uh, inhibitors target a likely cause of, of, of treatment resistance by support suppressing uh, hormone uh, senses rather than blocking the uh, mineral corticoid receptors. So this is the, the difference between uh, this drug and other similar drugs, maybe like uh, epidinone or spironolactone. Uh, so this uh, drug inhibits uh, the senses uh, uh, from the start. Uh, so this drug uh, selectively inhibits uh, synthase uh, 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 enzyme uh, by targeting uh, uh, it directly, and it has low affinity uh, for the uh, uh, 11B hydroxylase enzyme that is responsible for cortisol synthesis. So uh, uh, we have many trials, uh, phase one trials that uh, uh, dealt or, uh, or uh, tested the, uh, the safety of this uh, drug in healthy volunteers, and this trial, the Bright Hypertension trial, uh, aimed to uh, uh, test its effic efficacy uh, on treatment of uh, resistant hypertension. Uh, so this is the methods. Uh, actually, it's a multi-center randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial. Uh, actually, uh, the number of patients was not uh, very uh, large, uh, 248 patients uh, with a blood pressure uh, of 130 over 80 or higher, but uh, in the exclusion criteria, uh, they excluded patients with uh, blood pressure above 180 systolic. So these patients were randomized uh, to four groups. Uh, the first arm, uh, uh, three categories, 0.5 milligram dose, one milligram dose, and two milligram dose versus placebo. And the saturation was 12 weeks. So we have four groups in this study. Uh, placebo group versus three groups for the active drug. Uh, the uh, three groups in the active drug with um, uh, different doses, 0.5 and 1 milligrams and 2 milligrams. The primary endpoints, we have uh, primary efficacy and primary safety endpoints. The primary efficacy endpoints uh, was uh, the change of systolic blood pressure from baseline in each group of the active drug compared to placebo. And the secondary efficacy endpoint was the change of the diastolic blood pressure from the baseline in each group uh, of the four groups in this trial. So the exclusion criteria uh, was uh, blood pressure above 180. This was uh, considered an emergency uh, ca uh, cases or emergency uh, uh, hypertension uh, cases that uh, needs emergency treatment. Uh, and uh, the systolic blood pressure uh, above 110 was excluded. The GFR uh, less than 45 was excluded. And uncontrolled diabetic patients were excluded from this trial. So uh, to be eligible for the trial, patients who, have, who had been receiving uh, mineral corticoid receptor antagonist or potassium sparing diuretics, epidinone or spironolactone, were required to discontinue these agents for at least uh, four weeks before randomization. So uh, they started with a total of 779 patients who underwent screening. Uh, from these patients, uh, 360 were uh, included in the placebo run uh, in period, total of 275 patients were randomly assigned to receive once daily back to the state dose at a dose uh, uh, 0.5 milligrams. This was 69 patients. Uh, one milligram uh, dose of the back to the state, 70 patients. 
2 milligrams dose was 67 patients versus 69 placebo patients. So one patient uh, who was randomly assigned to receive Bexodrostat uh, didn't uh, receive the drug, so we had uh, a total of 274 patients who had uh, 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 included in the study, and from these patients, 248 who completed the study. So we started in the first place, 279 الحقيقه اللي, اللي فضل في الاخر 248 بيشنتس اللي هم بداوا التريتمنت وفضلوا كومبلاينت عليه وانهوا الفولو اب بتاع الترايل. So these were the results actual, actually after uh, 12 uh, uh, weeks uh, follow up uh, as we can see in these uh, 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 graphs uh, the uh, change or the decrease in systolic blood pressure in the Baxterstat 2 milligrams uh, group uh, was uh, uh, average uh, average was uh, minus 20.3 millimeters of mercury in the systolic blood pressure uh, and this was uh, the best uh, result that the drug uh, had made uh, minus 20 in the 2 milligrams dose and minus 17.5 in the 1 milligrams dose and minus 12.1 in the point of uh, in the 0.5 milligrams dose versus minus 9.4 millimeter mercury in the placebo group this in the systolic uh, blood pressure uh, change and for the change of the systolic blood pressure from the baseline uh, we can see that the two milligrams uh, those of Baxter-Stat had made a change of a minus 14.3 uh, millimeters mercury and the one milligrams uh, dose had uh, changed uh, uh, with minus 11.8 millimeters mercury and the 0 0.5 milligrams dose uh, had a change of uh, minus 8.6 millimeters mercury versus placebo that had made a change of minus 9.2 millimeters mercury uh, in the diastolic blood pressure change. So uh, the results, uh, so from a, a total of 248 patients completed the trial, uh, we had uh, a significant reduction in the Baxter-Stat 2 milligrams dose uh, with uh, a P uh, value of 0 0.001. This is a significant result that shows that uh, the 2 milligrams dose is the most potent uh, dose in this drug in changing or decreasing the systolic blood pressure. Uh, actually, there was no uh, deaths or adverse effect were noted in the Baxter-Stat group versus uh, placebo. And then we had the second secondary endpoints, that is the change in the diastolic blood pressure. I think it was not that significant like the systolic blood pressure on the, in the primary endpoints. So in conclusion of this study, uh, patients with resistant hypertension who received Baxter-Stat had, had dose-related reduction in the blood pressure. It's a significant dose-related reduction in the uh, systolic blood pressure. So um, to be honest, actually, uh, there is another trial testing this uh, drug. Actually, it's uh, uh, a more recent trial. It was uh, uh, published in March 2023, this year, maybe two months ago. It's the HALO uh, trial uh, uh, that had a different opinion. Uh, it shows that uh, the drug was not that uh, uh, potent or not that uh, uh, effective in treatment of hypertension. So uh, these are my take home messages. Uh, hypertension is a big cardiovascular problem, yet it's a modifiable problem. Many trials uh, have addressed the treatment of resistant hypertension, trying new drugs like Vaxedrostat in bright hypertension trial and HELLO trials. Others uh, uh, tried renal denervation and simplistic trials. Still, we have uh, conflicting data. Regarding the drug Baxter-Stat, the two trials included uh, less than uh, 300 patients each one. No data about patients' ethnicity. Actually, the uh, BRIGHT trial was uh, conducted in the USA in the primary, in, in some primary uh, healthcare uh, centers. Uh, it was not a, a very large trial. Uh, it, not, it was not a multi-center trial with uh, more numbers of patients. So we need more trials uh, with more number of patients uh, uh, are needed to judge uh, the, the use of, our, uh, of this drug. Thank you for your attention. I'm ready for any questions. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Ahmed. The floor is open for any query question from the audience. Uh, okay. Uh, for the sake of time, I'll may pay one small question for you. To conclude, um, what did the HALO group may claim on the Brighton group uh, they detected or uh, claimed any pitfalls in their studies? Have the HALO group claimed any pitfall against the Brighton study? Pitfalls? Uh, to my knowledge, no. 
الدعوة أي سقطات موجودة في الميثودولوجي؟ To my knowledge, I think uh, the hello didn't uh, claim any pitfalls in the in the other tribe. Okay, thanks a lot. Appreciate it.